Hi, welcome to It's All Local, a Milton Access television show. Today, our guest is Sue Galvin, our town clerk. Welcome. We are here in the Cronin Room, which is named after John A. Cronin, who was actually called the executive secretary at the time. That was the position, which is now the town administrator. And he did that for 33 years. I so. And then upon his retirement, this room was named after him. So that's really nice. And there's a lot of information on him. I did a little digging. So I think we'll have to do a show on him at some point. Anyway, thank you for coming on. I, I hope you're OK with Nick Milano. Um, asking you to be my next Absolutely, guest. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you end up being our town clerk? Okay, so um, first and foremost, I'm a mother of two grown children. I have a son and a daughter, and I'm a beautiful daughter-in-law. Um, I've lived in Milton most of my adult life, and um, I was also raised here in Milton, and um, that's about it about me. <laughs> that's it. That's a lot about you. I think that's awesome. I was actually in your office last week and I saw pictures of your kids. That's right. And your son's been married for five years. Just about five and years. And you have a dog. Uh, he yep. has a dog. He has yep. a dog. So how much do you baby say your dog? Mother of yeah. puppy. Um, and uh, yeah, he bought a house in Rockland. He lives there um, oh, nice. about three years ago. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So anyway, so tell us about being the town clerk. What's it entail? Like, how long have you been the town clerk? So I've been the town clerk for um, just shy of 12 years. Um, I became the town clerk after the um, prior town clerk retired. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in his office and um, did a lot of soul searching. Uh, the thought of running uh, for a town clerk. Uh, I'm pretty much an operations person. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought that would be a good fit. And then both of my parents, I come from a family that both of my parents, my father was an educator, my mother was a social worker. So being service oriented kind of is in the blood. Yeah. And um, so it was kind of a logical step for me. Yeah, that makes sense. So when you were here, what did you do prior to being the town clerk? You were still in Milton in the town clerk's office? Yeah. So oh, tell um, me about that. I started working in the town clerk's office um, 2010. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just worked in the office and then I um, quickly became the assistant town clerk. And um, I learned a lot. And um, the short time that I was I was that in that role, um, the town clerk was a great mentor to me. And um, the biggest hesitation I had in running was um, I am really very shy. And um, although I had grown up here in Milton, um, I knew my family mm -hmm. and close immediate friends, but um, I was not somebody who got out a lot and. Oh. Um, mixed and mingled so well, um every time i go to the town clerk's office it's a it's great in there everyone's so nice and warm and answer my question i think i've been in there too many times <laughs> to count so so what do you do what's the average day like for a town clerk especially you've had a busy year with two yeah. you had two elections this year so, so far two yeah. elections <laughs> three more to go yep um, that we know about. Yeah. So um, you had a busy year so ahead of you. I can't say that there's a typical day. Um, every day is different, and um, which makes it a really fun and exciting job. Mm -hmm. Constantly learning new things, um, and uh, it's challenging. And um, you will get to work with a lot of different um, departments, both on the state level and on the local level, and um, get to meet a lot of interesting people, learn a lot of interesting facts. And, um, you know, I would have to say that doing elections is um, pretty interesting and fun. What are some or, of like the, I know my common mistakes when I'm a treasurer on people's, <laughs> I know my <laughs> mistakes. What are some of the common mistakes people make on their paperwork when they're handing it in? What do you see most of the time? So. I think everybody tries really, really hard, and I think that um, you, you know the candidates and um, the people that work behind the candidates um, do do an excellent job. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of information that you have to gather really fast and become almost like an expert in it, mm -hmm. and um, in different variety of fields, and so um, you know. 
sometimes they need a little assistance in tweaking the paperwork and stuff. But um, for the most part, I have to say, our candidates and um, our the, their helpers do a fantastic job. What's the most common question? Do you have any common like things that happen at the town clerk's office, like the most common so, question or things that are occurring? Or do you get a lot of people coming into the wrong office? We do. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, oftentimes our office is the first stop. Yep. Um, so we have to know a little bit about what every department does, So, um, which is great, you know, mm -hmm. that we get to, to find out. And sometimes we don't know that a department handles something, and we learn that. Um, but most common questions, it depends on the subject matter because we handle so many things. We do public records, we do elections, we do vital records, um, legal postings, census. So th there's a wide variety of questions that can come our way. Um, so I can't say that there's one specific thing. How do I register to vote? Um, you know, to... Um, how do I complete my census? Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of questions that come our way. Oh, that's good. That's, yeah, yeah. And no, it's I, fun. I, yeah, no, it's it is. Fun. And then I'm, I'm, every time I've gone in there, it's oh, you've always been. Everyone's polite. You have a team of like four or five working under you. Um, no, nope, I have three others three. that work with okay. me. And then um, during special special occasions like elections mm -hmm. and census, um, I have part time seasonal help. Okay. So um, right now. We've had a lot of seasonal help, you know, especially with the early voting by mail. Um, on average, we've been sending out about 3,000 um, ballots to um, our residents. And that's quite an undertaking. Yeah. So are they just automatically going out? Or are these being requested? So how is it working so, now? So um, people have the choice to either request it per election mm -hmm. or they could have chosen to do all elections. Mm -hmm. So for those that chose all elections, um, they would get a ballot automatically for every single election that the town has. That would be include local, federal, and state. Oh, wow. Um, so right now we have the town election that's underway. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't gotten the ballots back yet, but um, we have about roughly 4,000 um, ballots that need to be mailed. And, you know, it sounds like a simple operation, but it is quite entailed. Um, so you have to make sure that we have a valid signature for every single person that's applied, um, that we're sending it to the right address, whether it be their local address or if they're out of town, the other address, um, that they get the right ballot. So for our local election, each precinct has their own ballot. Yes, we have the town-wide that are all in common, but then we have the representative town meetings members, so each precinct has to have their that, own ballot. That, that's in, that sounds intensive. So Yeah, it, that's a lot of work it, it to make sure that everyone... Work. Oh, so, I, didn't, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So each precinct, if you're doing a mail-out, Mail and ballot, you have to make sure each one's correct for that precinct. Correct. That's a lot of work. It is. And, you know, fortunately, we've been really lucky to get um, great seasonal um, temporary help that really take the um, job serious, knowing that there's no room for error. You know, you want to make sure that every voter that's requested gets the right ballot and that through no fault of ours that they're able to vote. Yeah. Um, so... Um, we've been pretty fortunate in getting oh, the right people. That's really great information. I never even thought about that. It's funny, like you, when you know you don't, you take certain things for granted. And then when you're talking to someone, I'm like, oh, God, yeah, they really have to split up by precinct right. for those mail and ballots, and that, right. yeah. that's probably very time consuming, it's extremely time consuming. Yeah. consuming. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then when they come back, you have to keep them by precinct and. Um, ensure that the signatures are on. So I it, think when I was in your office, I saw things split up. Yeah. Now, it's funny, I didn't have that in context, but now that you said that, I remember looking, going into your office, and I, when I was walking through to get to your office, there were things split, yes, divided. So that's divided what that divided was for. Precinct oh, okay. and, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so it, it's, it's time consuming. Oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds pretty challenging as a town clerk. And then this year you have so many elections, plus a special election. Right, we have, so. you want to make sure everybody's educated. Yeah. You know, the, the laws change very fluidly. And um, so to make sure that I'm up on all the changes and then to educate my staff. And then we are so fortunate to have all the poll workers that work for us. And then 
Um, you throw in the added benefit of having DPW staff and the police. Um, you know, the, it's quite a team operation. That sounds that like one it would, person just can do can, can't yeah. do so by rely, themselves. Right, yeah. you have police at the precincts. I remember, I see them there, yeah. and then your poll workers. You have to coordinate them. Correct, and they have to know. You know that what the rules are, what they have to ensure is happening. Do you go to a lot of meetings on the state level? Do you meet with the... Yeah, so there's th four meetings typically throughout the year that um, I try to make. Um, they're usually um, one in the fall, one in the spring, one in the um, summer, I'm sorry, that's three. And then um, there's more of regional. Um, there's about three of those. Okay. So I try to make as yeah. many of them and then... Um, after COVID, um, the Secretary of State's office has offered um, Zoom training. So um, during like the pr primary, we had weekly Zoom training to um, help keep us up to date and everything like that. So when, once the election's over, so post-election, where do all these ballots end up? Do you have to hold on to them for a certain amount of time? So, do they get locked up? Yep, they have to remain. Um, so the ballots that have been written on um, for state and federal, we have to keep for 22 months um, under lock and key. Mm -hmm. So we keep them in boxes sorted by election with the election date. Um, there's a little election room downstairs that is overflowing. Um, and um, so we keep it there. For town elections, we're only required to keep those ballots for 30 days. Oh, really? I would think it would be longer. I yeah, didn't know. no, for okay. town elections, we're required to keep them and then we can destroy them. Okay. So they all get um, destroyed. Uh, we have a com contract with a shredded company okay. that comes and destroys the ballots. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. I'm learning a lot today about <laughs> elections. So I learned something about your office, that you're closed one to two every day. I learned that the hard way. Yeah. So, so I just thought that'd be a nice little announcement. Yeah, so to... we, it, and it's not a permanent thing. Oh, so it's not? No, oh, okay. no. We did it um, right during the um, primary. Okay. Because my staff wasn't getting a break for lunch. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's important that they have that mental health uh, break. Yeah. So we, we started it right around that time. We'll probably keep it up until after the town election. Then mm -hmm. for the summer, we'll go back right. and resume. And then in the open. summer, you're closed early on Friday or you're closed Friday? Um, nope. It, the whole building um, works eight to five, Monday through Thursdays. Okay. And then on Fridays, the whole building is um, closed at 1.30. That's so we work eight to 1.30. Oh, that's nice. So yeah. get that break on Fridays. And that's permanent. That's not that's just- That's a permanent a, thing. That's yes. Nice. Yes. So yeah. what is, what's something that people might not know about the town clerk's office? Do you have a Facebook page? Do you have anything that they um, should know? So we use the regular town's Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, and- um, Mostly, I use my website to communicate information. I do a newsletter yearly. Oh, you do? Um, you do a yearly newsletter? I do. Okay. I would like to say I do, did it more frequently, but <laughs> um, uh, so far, I've only been able to do it once a year. I usually send it out with the town census, and it kind of reviews what's happening or what it to expect in the year to come. Oh, that's really nice. I should look at that more closely when I get something in my town census mailing. I don't do that. Sorry. Um, no. Oh, no, I will, though. No, I'm going to do that from now on. So um, so, uh, so let's just get to some fun questions for you. Do you have a favorite board game and why? So I do. The one that first came to my mind is um, I love Scrabble. And for no particular reason other than I can remember. It brings back really great memories because I played them with my kids. And it was part of how they learned how to spell and um, read and everything. So, I mean, I like all board games, the game of life. Um, but I thought that was a little cheesy to say. Um, <laughs> I remember the part part. cheesy. The pegs driving nuts um, Monopoly. I mean, oh, Monopoly's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we were big boy game players, so yeah. um, it, it's more of for the nostalgia that it brings back. You should try Catan. There's a oh, new one. Yeah, I really? just started playing Catan, and I'm kind of liking it. Oh! I, I, I lose every time, but, yeah. you know, I still I'm enjoy I'm still losing. That's okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's more the, the, you know, hanging out and being with people and 
Sharon laughs. That's yeah, it, it's, it's good. We do it. We, we try to do them um, at least twice a month. Oh, that's great! Yeah. It's fun when you have kids. And Absolutely. You can that. Yeah, yeah, yep. That. Yep. Do you believe in ghosts? You know, I've never had an experience with one. <laughs> um, so, uh, but I, you never know. I guess, right? Um, but. Nothing. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Maybe during the eclipse we'll see. Yeah. Guys. Maybe a little. Yeah. Maybe the eclipse will rattle them out. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> What's a book you would recommend to for Milton residents? So, and um, my daughter-in-law, she's an English teacher, so she's mm-hmm. she's always good for giving you a recommendation on what's a good book. So, um, she gave me a recommendation. It's by James. Oh, what was his name? James. Oh, I think I have it written down. To go look at your notes. Yeah, no, that's shame in the notes. James Clear, <clears throat> and um, it's called Atomic Habit, and mm-hmm. it's a really cool bo- book because it talks about how like small little changes you do can m- turn into habits, make big differences in your life, and make dif- big differences in your life. Oh. So. Um, I haven't been very successful in applying all of them, <laughs> but you have but read the in book. In theory, <laughs> I it's, think we, it, it's it's a great practice to do. Oh, <laughs> well, I'll have to pick that up and, and take a peek at it. Yeah. So, anything else you want to tell us about yourself or about the clerk's office or things you're going to be doing this summer? Anything fun planned um, for yourself? I, because we have two oh, elections, right. we will be working most of the summer. Uh, that's um, right. But, you this know, I do one. sponsor a concert out on the gazebo. Um, through Park and Rec, and it happens to be one of the people that work in my office. She's got an incredible voice, oh. um, so she will be singing out there, and I look forward to that. And um, yeah, I, I, other than working and um, trying to, you know, may, maybe do a day trip over to uh, Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, that will probably be sum up my. Um, some, your summer, summer. for yourself, for yeah. yourself, so you're yeah. going to be bogged down in election after election. Absolutely. And then at least next year, you only have the one, right? Correct. <laughs> so Correct. it'll so be I nice. will be looking forward, forward to, to that. that one election. Yes. That'll be true. So the next topics are, is there a West Milton, all about the library and the Milton trolley? What would you like to see? I think I would like to see um, all about the library. Okay. Yeah. We're on it. Sue, thank you so much for joining us. Thank this was you really for great. Me. No, we were, I really you know, I'm glad it. Nick nominated you and you were uh, kind enough to come on and, and talk with me and have the have the residents of Milton learn about their town clerk. I well, really appreciate it. I did not know you were from Milton. Yeah. I see. I don't do that. I, I try to see what comes up. But that's great. Yeah. 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 So, well, thank you for no, doing this. No, it's a I, great. It was really lovely having you. You've been so great every time I've been in that office oh, asking thank questions you. and stuff. So it's a, it's a pleasure thank to interview you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. It's all local. Thank you so much.